Now for more on innovation in the energy sector, we're joined by Michael K. Dorsey, co-founder and vice president of strategy with the U.S. Climate Plan. Welcome to the show. Mitchell, thank you. So, Michael, what are some of the most promising trends you're seeing at the moment in energy innovation? I think there's three big amazing trends. The first is the development of renewable energy storage technology. Uh, and the, the second is the development and growth of offshore wind, especially in the United States, playing catch up with the rest of the world. And, and the first and foremost, the most explosive is definitely in the solar. Uh, that's solar in the U.S. Uh, for the first time last year, we had 100 uh, uh, megawatts installed in almost half the states. It actually doubled uh, solar capacity in the U.S. took us from about 20 gigawatts installed to over 40 uh, gigawatts. That's a huge jump. Uh, that still follows uh, the rest of the world, by the way. Right now we're seeing about twice or two and a half times that commitment in India alone. So you've got solar exploding, you've got offshore wind coming online for the first time, first commercial offshore fields in the U.S. last year, uh, and then the storage revolution, those three. And it's interesting, in terms of the storage revolution, and especially when it comes to solar, you have Elon Musk, who uh, partnered with SolarCity, and now is powering an island in the American Samoa, which used to rely on diesel, and is now almost 100% reliant on solar. How close are we, though, to seeing the widespread adoption as, of renewable energy as really the primary source? We are, we are at that point right now. We, and we crossed over that point actually last year for the first time in human history. We saw the first renewables take over in terms of installed capacity uh, of energy generation for the first time in human history. They, they leapt ahead of fossil fuel uh, in terms of installed capacity. But what about consumers? Sometimes it, it can take us a while to really adopt some of these new things. What about on the consumer level? Could that take a lot longer? Well, I think there are some issues there. You know, to be frank, in the U.S. we saw a slowdown in residential uh, solar expansion and growth has sort of slowed down last year. But the reality is, is that we see large uh, companies committing to 100% renewable targets uh, coming forward. We see this not just in the U.S., we see this worldwide. We see the really explosive growth in solar and, and wind worldwide. They are now dominating energy production, and that looks like the, the going forward practice independent of what we hear from people in different White Houses. And give us some examples. What are some of the companies at the forefront of this? Well, you know, in the forefront, I would say in, the, in terms of offshore wind, we've got the Block Island uh, a, a project, which is off the, the coast of Rhode Island, that's being led uh, with funding primarily from Societe Generale. Uh, we've got big uh, commitments in the U.S. by Sun Run, Solar City, uh, and others coming online in the U.S. But worldwide, I think, you know, Siemens is leading on wind. Uh, we've got tremendous commitments by the Chinese. Indeed, they're actually, their production is producing a real a collapse in the price of solar and making it really accessible to consumers, but also at the commercial side. Now, we also know that global temperatures are continuing to rise. So tell us about some of the countries that are really successfully nurturing energy innovation, especially when it comes to, to cooling. Well, everybody in the world, perhaps except the United States, we saw a real groundbreak uh, just today at the, at the G7 meeting in Sicily. Six countries got together and really chastised the American president on his waywardness on climate. But that energy was really in the room because just last week we saw the EU committing itself with China and Canada to get out and really make a strong commitment on the Paris Agreement. So we've got pretty much the entire world really pushing forward. And I would say that actually includes the United States. It doesn't include the administration in the U.S., but it includes companies in the U.S., it includes people in the U.S. Really the whole world is on this trajectory of building out renewable energy and doing so because really we've got a trillion dollar opportunity here and it's playing out worldwide. And in terms of the role of the private sector, we're seeing a lot of entrepreneurs getting into this space sometimes out of need to really try and improve their local communities. Um, so what are traditional companies doing? How are they adapting to this energy revolution? Well, I would say traditional companies are doing one of two things, at least. They're doing a lot of things, but certainly one of two things. On the one hand, you, you say traditional utilities. They're both, in the U.S. in particular, they're aiding this revolution, but sometimes slowing it down. Because for them, they recognize that this renewable revolution is really it's competition for them. It's competition because they have invested a lot in the old 20th century fossil fuel technology. At the same time, you've got big companies like Google uh, and others making full-on commitments to go 100% renewable in the next five to 10 years. So some companies are making really big, big commitments. And just lastly, the biggest hurdles you see when it comes to getting investment and really some momentum in this space? Well, I would say in the U.S. space, the, the, the real hurdle is the regulatory space. It's really uneven. You've got about a third of the states where uh, arguably the installation of solar and wind is, is quasi-legal or even outright illegal. Uh, that has implications on both the commercial side as well as the residential uh, installs. 
Uh, but at the same time, you've got a really favorable environment. You look at India, where the, the prime minister is committed essentially to 100 gigawatts, three times the entire install of the United States in the history of the U.S. Certainly a lot of momentum. Uh, we hope it continues. Thank you so much, Michael K. Dorsey, co-founder and vice president of strategy for U.S. Climate Plan.